Sports participation in the United States has reached an all-time high, and more and more people are getting active and having fun. Gone are the days where physical challenges keep us on the sidelines. Now more than ever, athletes with disabilities are not only participating in sports, but are competing at every level. Opportunities for athletes with disabilities today on Training for Life. I recently met a young girl who was able to push on and go forward like Don's talking about. Her name is Stacy Minellen. She's a 15-year-old skier who not only conquered the highest of mountains, but has also conquered a visual impairment. Why don't you just give me a little bit of background about how this kind of journey started for you and where it started? I started skiing when I was four at Windham Mountain because my family like went up there and uh, my parents wanted to like get me out and like doing normal stuff like normal kids. She started out skiing when she was four with two guys on either side of her holding a bamboo pole and at that point we thought that was just great. We always treated her normal, that it was, nothing was wrong with her. So doing that was like great because we can go skiing and she could go skiing and you know it was good for self-esteem and all that. I have achromatopsia which means colorblind but I'm colorblind and I'm like really sensitive to light so outside it's really hard to see. I can only see like three feet or so and it's not even like clear. So when I go outside I wear goggles to like filter out the light. We've been skiing together. Uh, as guide and athlete mm -hmm. for two and a half years. And what has this experience been like for you? It's, it's really cool for me to guide an athlete that has a, a low vision or vision uh, disorder. Is a, it's like a brand new challenge sure. because she'll be right behind me and then we'll race the entire course 10 or 15 feet apart. What we use is a, a Bluetooth microphone headset inside our helmets. So the whole time that we're out, we're intimately talking to each other. Now we know that you're hoping to maybe get over to the Paralympic Games in Russia, is that correct? Yeah. If you do make it, what do you think you're gonna feel? Mm, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Anything that, you know, did you ever think that it would be possible for you to do that? Um, not until like a few years ago, yeah. but now I think like if we work hard and stuff, we could do it. So what are the steps you're taking now to prepare yourself for the potential of being there? I do like dry land training and I train every weekend in the winter, Saturdays and Sundays, or like all day. Good. Don't rush. Light on our feet. When I go, we do like strength and we do mostly like legs and core because that's what I need most for skiing. She's an inspiration to me. I don't think I've really ever told her that, but she definitely is. It's fun to see, you know, to see her accomplish every every step. Mm -hmm. Our first races together were the national championships when she was 12. I know that you have a pretty awesome support system here, including your parents. My parents, mm -hmm. they're the best. <laughs> they're always really supportive and like, they're the ones that started it all. The cool thing about mm -hmm. Stacy's parents is that they've always let her be as independent as she can. So that's been a really, I think, important part of her being able to, to do this and to um, have the success that she's had. I'm, I'm proud of her. She's really an inspirational person. She is amazing, and I think she can do anything she wants to do in anything. Tara, what a great piece that was, and, and so inspiring. Tell me more about her, her impairment, her eyesight impairment. Well, the technical term used is acromatopsia. It's the inability to have, to achieve visual acuity and a sensitivity to light. So what really impedes her vision is bright daylight or the brightest of lights because there is no contrast there. So she actually just was able to get brand new black, very dark contacts that are almost like a built-in sunglass. And then when wow. she's skiing, the goggles she wears has like seven times a window car tint, which really allows 
allows her to fly down the mountain to adjust to lighting conditions and shadows. Simply said, she's partially sighted when she competes. There's three levels, B1, B2, B3, the B standing for blindness. She's B3 in one eye and B2, which are the least challenging of the three levels. When you think about that, you say all those things, I think as a parent, how do you let go? How do you let your, your daughter, who has those, that level of, of, of sight impairment, get out there on a the slope and go, you know, however fast you go down a ski slope? How do the parents let go? Well, Stacy's 15 years old and she's been skiing since she was four and it started because they wanted to find an activity that she would be able to do and when she started skiing, as we heard, they hold on to a bamboo stick and then finally the guide said, you know, she's good enough to go down by herself and her mom admits she was a nervous wreck then and <laughs> she's still a nervous wreck, but that's just a mother's instinct to be nervous for your child whether she's visually impaired right. or not. But I think for Susan and Aaron, they told Stacy. You're not going to use the word can't in mm -hmm. this house. You're only going to use the word can. So figure out a way to make it happen, and they have. And that's an inspiring thing and, and an encouraging thing for a parent to say, that we don't say can't in this house. I do the same thing with my kids. But how much beyond the parent's expectation has she really gone here? I think tremendously. No one ever imagined that she would have an opportunity at this stage to perhaps qualify for the U.S. national team and then perhaps, God willing, go on to the Paralympics in Russia in another year. Yeah. And I think it's that mentality which has driven Stacy to believe that she can literally conquer anything, even the highest of mountains. It's really awesome. All right, we'll stick around. When we come back, we'll find out how athletes with disabilities can take their first step off the sidelines and onto the playing field. It's up next, so don't go away.